Hello everybody and welcome back to SEG 2900. This is lecture number two. Um, so up until now what we've done is we talked about the startup company that you guys are going to be forming and the product definition um, and you know coming up with an idea and talking about it with your team uh, which is which was really great. And then last couple, uh, last lecture or so we spent a lot of time on the project setup. So kind of getting everything set up and really introducing you guys to one of the most powerful source control systems out there and most popular source control systems out there Git. So hopefully you guys learned a lot about that and hopefully you guys were able to get your project set up. Um, so now that everything is set up, we're really going to start diving into the marketing website that we're going to build to advertise and market our product. Um, like I said from the beginning, your product idea is not what you're actually building in this uh, course. Now you can decide to take it if you want to that level, um, but the requirements of this course is that we're going to build a website to promote that product. So um, really now we're starting to dive into that. And over the next couple lectures, we're gonna basically be learning some web technologies. Um, so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build a website to advertise and market your product, okay? Because really uh, when it comes down to it, when you have a product that you wanna sell or that you want people to help you build, uh, marketing and advertising is a very, uh, marketing, selling, and advertising are a very important part actually. Okay. So today uh, is all about design and HTML, okay? So when we talk about design, we're really talking not really from a coding perspective, but really just from a pure artistic perspective. Now we're talking within the confines of a screen, whether that be a mobile website or a, uh, a desktop that you're using or a laptop. We're talking, talking that design language, um, but we're really not getting into the code. And then we're gonna start to talk about the first web language that we're gonna to use to help code that design. Okay, so today's lecture is really broken up into two pieces, which is design is the first part and HTML is the second part. Okay, so like I said, um, we're really talking about building a marketing website to advertise your product and we're gonna to start to code uh, that website for your product. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is how we design your marketing website's structure. Okay, and I really want to think, I really want you to think in terms of structure and not necessarily about the finished gloss. So we're not really talking about things like colors or fonts or, um, you know, shadows and gradients or, or even, even specifically what pictures we're going to use, those kind of things. We're not really talking about that. We're talking really about the overall structure of the website. In other words, um, you know, where is the menu going to be? Where are the sections going to be? Where, what pages are, are going to be there? Um, if we have a picture and some text, where, how are they going to be laid out on the page? That's really what we're talking about in terms of structure. Is there going to be a table of data explaining like the pricing that we're going to use? Uh, these kind of things. These, so this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the website structure. Um, so here are a couple questions that you might want to ask yourself when you're thinking about the website structure. So one, um, where are your links and navigation going to be? I mean, that's one of the biggest pieces of a website, right? Is like uh, most traditional websites, when you go to them, um, they have some kind of navigation, right? Because there's a lot of content to get through. So are you going to have the navigation at the top, top left, top right, down the side? You know, how are you going to structure that? Um, one thing you might want to ask yourself is uh, what pages are you going to build? So what, what content are you actually going to put onto your website? Um, are you going to talk about the features of, of your product? Um, are you going to have like a contact page, uh, maybe a team about the, uh, sorry, a page about the team that built this product? Um, you know, so what are the pages that you're going to build uh, for the website? You know, because there's so many things you can choose from. Um, you might want to start thinking about how each page is laid out, right? So... Um, again, like I said, if maybe every page has a big splash image at the top with like a slogan and then all the, all the details are below it or something like that. Um, maybe pages are separated, you know, maybe you have a picture on the left and then like some text on the right. How are you going to, how are you going to lay that out? Um, and then maybe you want to ask yourself, what's the overall structure of the entire website going to be? Are you going to maybe adopt a, a single page kind of scrolling website where the whole, everything is just on one page and you're just kind of scrolling through it? Um, are you going to have multiple pages, you know, one page for each, each section? Um, are you going to do something a little radical? Maybe it's kind of like an animation or something like that, that reveals all these different pieces, right? So, um, you know, you gotta, you kind of want to ask yourself what you're, what you're doing in those situations. So these are the kinds of questions that you want to ask when you're thinking about your website structure. 
Um, the other thing you want to think about is is not just how it's laid out, but really um, what the user experience is going to be like. In other words, um, you know what is going to happen when someone clicks on something. How are they going to navigate from page to page? Um, are there things you can do to make it easier? So you know you maybe have your navigation at the top, but maybe also on every page you have a next button that makes it easier to navigate through. Uh, maybe the placement of your buttons and stuff really affects how a user interacts with it. Maybe you click on something that says details and it just expands open rather than jump to another page, right? So how how can you make it easier for the user to to navigate around your page, right? Um, so this is known as user experience. Okay, what ha what what does the user have to do to kind of get get through your uh, uh, website? So uh, here's a couple samples, and they're by no means all the examples, but I'll just kind of show you a couple examples here that I have. Um, so the first one is a startup in Ottawa uh, called My Doma Studio. Um, so these guys actually uh, build an application that helps interior designers manage their business. Um, so you can see here, it's a pretty minimalist header design. You have My Doma Studio, the logo on the left, and then you have a little search bar. Uh, and then they have this menu that kind of flies in from the left. Okay, so they have that. Um, you know, picture on the right, and then you can see they have the major sections here. Um, so design is in our DNA, built for designers, by designers, um, you know, better together, you know, kind of uh, a layout of all the features here. You know, some testimonials, um, if you want some help, you know, and then a call to action here. So so what do you want them to do? You want to see a demo, start my trial, these kind of things. So um, another one here is um, Endless. So this is actually uh, one of the finalists from a previous class. Uh, I can't remember if it was last class or two classes ago. This is one of the finalists. Um, they came in, I think, second or third place. Um, so this is their website. So they have, um, you know, the menu up top here. So about pricing team, uh, and they went for a multi-page design. So every link uh, has its own page, but you can see every page is kind of laid out a little bit similar. So they have a, a kind of image at the top, um, you know, with the title there and then kind of the details underneath it. Um, so multi-page kind of header at the top, logo on the upper left. Logo on the upper left seems to be very common uh, uh, layout. Okay, and then they have a footer at the bottom here. And then I have a very simple example here of the, um, this is the uh, sample solution actually um, that we have on the website for you. So this is for Rumi. So again, kind of, uh, you know, you have a header at the top, multi-page design. Uh, this is what I'm talking about, kind of an oh, easy way to navigate through these things. Um, there's a table for the pricing, okay? So again, at this point, we're not thinking about the colors and the fonts and the specifics. We're talking about the overall structure, the overall layout, okay? All right. So that is what uh, the design uh, is all about when it comes to designing the structure. So how are you guys going to do this, okay? So so what I picture is that you guys, as a team, are kind of gonna get together, um, you know, uh, again, uh, depending on the situation, uh, probably remotely, you know, through Google Hangout or Google Meet or, you know, Microsoft Teams or something. You're kind of gonna get together and really kind of start to get your ideas together. Maybe there's some collaborative tools you can use online. Um, you know, at the, at the time that you're watching this video, um, things have kind of returned to normal and you're able to actually get into a room together, that's also great. Great. Um, so what you actually might use to actually do this design, there's a couple of options you have. You can use pen and paper. Pen and paper is a great way to design stuff. Um, what's nice about pen and paper is you're not restricted by anything. It's really just as free flowing as your ideas can be. Um, again, if you're able to get into uh, a, a room together, um, obviously depending on the situation of what's going on around the world, uh, whiteboarding is a great thing. Um, there are also digital virtual whiteboards that you can collaborate with. Um, and then the other thing that you can use to design is uh, some professional design tools. Uh, they're not always necessarily better, but they are a good alternative. Um, so there are programs like Balsamic, Sketch, um, Adobe Photoshop, and, and Illustrator, and InDesign, and uh, Dreamweaver, uh, Microsoft Office, and Google Docs even. Like, you know, just the layout stuff on, on using Google Docs, you can figure that out, right? So any of these tools are appropriate for this class. You can use anything, pen or paper, whiteboard software, whatever you want. Um, 
But but the one thing I will say is that uh, you will have to submit this digitally. So if you guys are using something physical like pen and paper, just be sure to take pictures of it when you submit it. So. Okay, so so that's those are the tools that you can use. Um, you know, how do you get started? Um, you know, the way I get started is really just being uh, inspired by other websites. A lot of times, I'll go browse other websites that I like and see kind of what they're using. Um, I'll I'll look up I'll Google website design awards and see what the latest trends are and and things like that. So um, if you really don't know where to start, I recommend just going browsing websites that you like and and maybe as a team, you guys can present websites to each other that you like and see and share your ideas together that way um so like i said um you know you're going to design the structure of your website um so we're ultimately designing um what we call wireframes okay so again we're not talking about the specific colors or the specific fonts those kind of things just the overall structures so of the wireframe of the website okay so you're gonna design your wireframes and be sure to document your work, okay? So what I mean by that is, you know, kind of explain the wireframes, you know? Um, especially if you're using whiteboards and pen and paper, be sure to, to scan or take pictures, like I said, but kind of explaining what you're doing and, and maybe explain the user experience a little bit as well. So um, so we're gonna we're gonna take a look at what that actually looks like. So here, here's an example here. So this is going back to the Rumi uh, uh, web application. Um, this is what the design might look like. So it's just on a piece of notebook paper here. So we have we have the the website here. Um, you know the logo in the upper left. Uh, you know the menu here features pricing team. You know a big background image and then a slogan here. Find a roommate quick and simple. A button features and you'll see there's some explanation around this, right? So this is the home page. Links go to other pages um, and we'll keep the nav bar on every page. So that 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 navigation bar will be on every page. Uh, this logo, if you click on this, it'll always go to the home page. Uh, the background image, maybe you have some ideas. Maybe it's a building, maybe it's a room, maybe it's a picture of students, maybe it's a picture of college campus. Um, and then clicking on this goes to the features page. Okay, so just again, laying it out and sketching it out. Um, here's what the features page might look like. Okay, so the feature page uh, has big icons and then a header. Okay, search by school, rating system, personality matching, and then a little short write-up. And you can see here, I haven't actually specified exactly the words, but I know I'm going to have some short write-up here. Again, just designing the structure here. And clicking on this, we'll go to the pricing page. So again, describing the user experience. Okay, so that's what your design might look like. Okay, and again, this this will eventually become a website. Okay, so so what I recommend again is figure out a way to collaborate um, um, and kind of share your ideas. I really like the idea of showing inspiration first, like get everybody to show their favorite websites and what they like, and then start to discuss what you want and how you want to build the website. Okay, and then the important thing is that you document it. So whether that's taking pictures or exporting it to you know. JPEGs or whatever, um, because that's ultimately what you're going to be submitting uh, to the TAs. Okay, um, but this is also a great way to design a website. A lot of times, uh, you know, as software engineers, we get into coding right away. It's nice to sit back and design from a higher level before you get into coding right away. Okay, so that is designing the structure of your marketing website. Okay, so that's part one of this lecture. Part two, we're going to talk about how we start to code this all. Okay, so when we start to code a website, there are three main languages that we can use. Okay, there's only three major languages that are supported by most major browsers. The first one is HTML, the second one is CSS, and the third one is JavaScript. And today we're talking about HTML. Okay, so what is HTML? So HTML, like I said, is one of the three major languages that browsers actually understand, okay? So Internet Explorer, Edge, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, these browsers, okay, they understand three languages and one of them they understand is HTML, which basically means if you write some HTML code, some HTML language code, the browser can actually interpret that and do something with it, okay? It can actually do some fancy stuff by reading that HTML code, okay? So the idea is that you code the HTML, you're the programmer, you code the HTML, and then the browser reads that HTML and interprets it and presents it to the user in a human readable way. I mean, in fact, anytime you go browse a website, right, you, you don't see code, you see fancy colors and pictures and text and all this stuff, right? So what's happening there is the browser 
is reading HTML code that somebody else has programmed and then interpreting it and presenting it to you, the user, in a human readable way. Okay? So this is how browsers work. So, so if you think about, you know, most programs, okay, you think about most programs on your desktop, you, you deal with files, right? So let's take Microsoft Word, for example. So Microsoft Word um, is a program that you use. And what you do with Microsoft Word usually is you open documents, right? You open doc files, right? Um, if you were to look at a doc file, um, the doc file itself is probably very complicated. It's got all this kind of complex code in it and stuff like that. Um, but what Microsoft Word does is it takes that doc file and presents it to you in a nice human readable way and human editable way, right? So that you can go in and you can make text bold and add your own text and add headers and all this stuff and then save that file, right? So that's how Microsoft Word works. Let's take Adobe Acrobat. Adobe Acrobat, you can usually open up a PDF, right? So you open up a PDF, that PDF file itself has some kind of really weird, kind of hard to read code, but Acrobat reads that code and presents the PDF to you in a human readable way, right? So this is how all computer programs work actually. Uh, not all, but most computer programs work. Computer programs basically uh, take data from a file and understand it and present it to the user in a human readable way, right? Well, internet browsers like Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, you know, any of these are actually no different from most computer programs. Um, they actually do the same thing. They open up files, interpret them, and present it to the user in a human readable way. Those files uh, for browsers are very specific, and one of those types of files is an HTML file. Okay, so here's what it actually looks like. So you will code HTML code. So on the left, as a programmer, this is actually what you would code, okay? You would actually code something that looks like this. So we have these little things called uh, HTML tags, okay? They have a less than sign and then a, sorry, yeah, a less than sign and a greater than sign. And every opening tag has a closing tag. You can see a little slash here. So there's all these matching tags. And that's what HTML looks like. You code it that way. And then what a browser does is you can open up that file and the browser will interpret that code and present it on the screen here, okay? In the, in the browser in a human readable way, okay? That's what HTML is. That's how easy it is to code with HTML. And that's why HTML, by the way, is one of the best languages to start off learning because you don't really need anything more than a text editor to create the code and then a browser to open it. Uh, other programming languages require things like compilation or transpiling and all this stuff. Uh, with HTML, it's, it's as easy as having a browser and a text editor. Okay, so let's let me give you a brief demo here. So I have Visual Studio here open, and this is actually the uh, the folder that we started with back in lecture uh, one or whatever. Okay, and so I have a file here uh, called uh, home.html. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear this and start from scratch again, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna code some HTML, all right? So I will code an HTML tag here. And what's interesting about Visual Studio Code is Visual Studio Code is, is smart enough to know how to open and close tags automatically for me. So you see that when I typed HTML, it actually automatically created a closing tag for me as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the body here and one of the, uh, so what the body is, is basically everything you see inside the browser window, okay? So there's stuff that you don't see in the browser window um, that you put in the head, but everything you see in the browser window is in the body, okay? So then in the body, I can start putting things like headers, okay? So I can put a level one header, so H1, and say, uh, welcome to my website. I can put a paragraph of text in here, so P stands for paragraph. So hello and welcome to my first website. Okay, so I save that. Okay, so I have a file now that has HTML code in it. Okay, so this is sitting on my desktop. How do I now open that in a browser? Okay, so if I go to Firefox, okay, what I can do is 
you don't usually do this in a browser, but you can do it, is you can actually open a file, just like with Microsoft Word and Acrobat. I can actually go to File and then Open File. Okay, so I'm actually in that folder already. So I'll just select Home and hit Open. And there we go. Okay, so what it did is it, it looked at that HTML code and it, it, it was able to parse it and interpret it and present it to me in a human readable form. Okay, so now I have this header and this paragraph of text. Okay, and so I can always change that. I can go back to Visual Studio Code and change website to have maybe an exclamation mark, hit save, come back here and just refresh this and now it has an exclamation mark, okay? So that's what HTML is. HTML is just like code that you code into a file and a browser opens it up, okay? Now, what's interesting here is that, um, you know, that's not normally how we view websites, right? Like how often do you hit file open to view a website, right? Um, that's not usually the way you do it. So, so how, does, how do browsers normally work? Well, it's not too different. So the way that browsers normally work is through what's called web requests, okay? So normally the way this works is your browser doesn't actually get the file from your local machine, okay? That's, that's what I just showed you, that's, but that's not normally how to do it. So normally the way this works is when you type in a URL into the location uh, bar, so you type in www.uottawa.ca, what's actually happening there is the browser is going out to the internet and it's going to hit a web server. So somewhere out on the internet, there's a computer that is at the address www.uottawa.ca. And when it hits that server, that server then sends back an HTML file, okay? So then that file comes back to the browser, okay? And then at that point, it's the same as if you hit file open. The browser then interprets that HTML and presents it to the user in a human readable way, okay? And by the way, this is a very, very important concept in web development. This idea of you make a request to a server and the server responds with something. This whole request response cycle is what the entire web is based on. Now, we don't get into it a crazy amount in this course, but do know that if you get into web development, you very, very, very much want to remember the idea of making a request to a server and a response coming back. That's what the entire web is built on, okay? So that is how web browsers work. Okay, so now that I've explained to you what HTML is and, and how it works in the browser, um, we don't actually, like I said, we don't actually teach you HTML in this course. And this is something that's all up to you guys to do some self-learning, okay? So we've uh, provided some links and um, we've, prov we've, sorry, we've provided some links for you in the course notes, but uh, basically one really good site you can go to is w3schools.com, okay? w3schools.com is a great introductory uh, site for learning HTML, but any HTML tutorial you can find online, uh, you'll be able to learn uh, uh, this stuff for sure, okay? So we're not gonna teach it to you, um, but what you wanna do is go out and look for w3schools.com, or what you can also do is you can, uh, again, Google HTML tutorials and start to learn about all these different tags, okay? You can learn about how to create links, how to create tables, how to create lists, all these things, um, and you'll be learning uh, HTML that way, okay? So on that note, I do wanna mention um, that when you start coding HTML, uh, your website probably won't look very you know, nice to you. It won't look as fancy as all the websites out there. And the reason is we haven't learned about styling. We haven't learned about how to decorate our HTML. So just know that when you submit your HTML for this deliverable, um, it's okay that the site looks very basic. It'll look like a really old website where all the links are blue or they've been visited, they're purple. All the font is Times New Roman. Um, that's okay, okay? So we're not looking for fancy websites at this point in the course, okay? When you deliver the deliverable that's associated with this part of the course, you're just delivering plain HTML, okay? And in the next course, in the next lecture, we'll talk all about how to make all that stuff look fancy, okay? So that's HTML. Definitely go to w3schools.com to learn uh, more stuff or Google your own tutorials. All right, that's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're talking. We're going to talk about all about making things fancy. See you guys in the next video.